Thank you very much. You. Uh, I want to thank all of you for, for uh, important testimony and, and lots of ideas. Uh, I, I want to ask uh, Kevin Schneider, who's the superintendent at, at Acadia. Kevin, you went through a, a, a major transportation study and, uh, that went on for several years. You worked with the community. Uh, where, did, where did you end up on that, and have you enough experience with it now to know whether it's working? Yeah, thank you, Chairman King. Uh, we spent several years preparing a transportation plan, which involved a great deal of community and stakeholder engagement. And you know, visitor use management at Acadia is not just about a vehicle reservation system. Uh, we're really trying to take a comprehensive approach by using a range of management actions as outlined in that plan. We worked closely with our communities, our, our business partners to help uh, develop that plan. Uh, you know, many opportunities for public engagement. It was about a four or five year planning effort to do that. And there are, as I said, several components to this, you know, expanding key park and ride locations in Acadia National Park so that visitors can leave their car behind, hop on our island explorer bus um, and get to key destinations. Expanding that transit system, so offering more routes for visitors, better bus service. Uh, using concessions contracts to move to smaller sized commercial touring buses. And of course, vehicle reservations are a piece of that as well. And so we, uh, as a result is that, of this- you're, you're doing the, the, the vehicle reservation at, at Cadillac Mountain this, this summer. Is it working? Are, are people, are, do people know it when they get to the mountain or are they angry because they got there and didn't know they needed a reservation? Yeah, we are we are very pleased with how the vehicle reservation system is going this summer on Cadillac. We did a pilot for about 21 days last fall in October, um, and as a result of that pilot, we made a, a few tweaks. Um, but in a nutshell, we're very pleased. And I'll give you an example. I was on the summit of Cadillac on the first day of our of our reservations this year in May. I was there in uniform, kind of seeing how things were playing out. And a, a visitor was there. He came up to me and he said. Uh, that he had been there a week prior to watch the sunrise and that he said it was a complete mess. There were cars everywhere, you know, completely overparked, cars double parked. And he said, this is so much better uh, with the reservation system. And, and we're hearing that sentiment from visitor reviews online. You can look at TripAdvisor, you can look at the recreation.gov app and see how, you know, see what people are saying. And, and I think uh, visitors understand that, you know, there's only 150 parking spaces on Cadillac Mountain. Uh, and, and we want people to have a really high quality experience and not everybody can be up there at, at the same time in their cars. It's not abnormal for us to have as many as 500 cars on the summit of Cadillac Mountain for those 150 parking spaces uh, prior to the reservation system. Let, let, let me ask uh, Mr. Reynolds a question. Uh, one of the issues I understand, and I may be wrong about this, but the Park Service has a a policy of not favoring one park over another in terms of, of advertising and promotion. But can we think about that policy in terms of promoting the lesser used national parks? For example, I was in uh, southwest Texas at, at one point and almost because of the weather went to Big Bend and it turned out to be one of the best experiences that my family has had. And it was a very little visited national park. Can we can we do some promotion that will spread the the visitation around somewhat so that they're not concentrated on a, a dozen iconic places? Yeah, thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for this both for this hearing and conversation, but also for that question. We we absolutely can be doing a a much better job of letting the Americans know. I mentioned in my testimony 423 sites. Many of them are gems. Your word. Um, and a lot of times they drive right by them on their way to a glacier, to a Yellowstone. We're interested in capturing folks once they're in a region of an area, right? If you go with your family, you're usually someplace for three or four days, and you'll have time. And you can balance a suite of these kind of things like Kevin just mentioned being done in Acadia. Well, well while maybe you're waiting for your hour to get your, your ticket, you know, you might want to know that there is, um, you know, the Roosevelt site up on the... Canadian border in, in with Maine, right? And that's an affiliated area of the national park system. We have ways to use um, our new mobile app. Recreation.gov can help connect people to use and know about these places. Does that but, have, a, does that have a, a feature like Waze, the app that tells you where the congestion is? No, it doesn't. Could that be added? 
Um, I can't speak for that. We can come back to you and see what rec.gov, the folks that manage that for us, would be able to do. But I will tell you we're working in a, in a field of emerging mobile technology, mobile integration, which I'm sure Senator Daines knows about. And this can range from tracking vehicles using Bluetooth, you know, without personal data to know what, what traffic is doing, much like what Waze, I think, uses background-wise. We have, as you know, bandwidth and infrastructure problems, particularly in the West, um, that, that can- We're working on that in another bill. That can challenge us. That's another hearing. But um, uh, yeah, we have ways that we're working with, particularly our partners in the Federal Highways Administration right now with some innovative new technologies that'll help us both manage and get the word out. Thank you, Senator Daines. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Gartland, thanks again for coming today.